There's a crisis in education. The COVID-19 pandemic has touched every single aspect of our society, schools among them. Over the past 11 months, literally billions of students have had their normal education interrupted, whether they've shifted to learning virtually or had their learning cut short entirely. And it's been shown time and time again that these types of disruptions negatively impact academic performance. For example, a paper published by Brown University predicts that students could learn approximately only two thirds of the amount of reading content and one half the amount of math content in the past school year compared to an average school year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. There is one flaw with this report though. It assumes all education is seized since direness should be taken with a grain of salt. However, the paper also doesn't account for the continuation of remote learning through the current 2020-2021 school year, meaning the paper underestimates the amount of time in which learning will be disrupted. School districts also took weeks to transition to a remote model, something else the paper doesn't account for, meaning the report is likely a decent model for the damage we can see in education. Today, I'm going to speak on how this crisis has affected a specific academic discipline, history, and how we can use the pandemic as an opportunity to permanently change history classrooms for the better. Teachers overwhelmingly view math and English as the two subjects students are most likely to fall behind in during remote learning. A national poll of 1,720 teachers in April showed that 52% of teachers are very concerned about their students falling behind in math during remote instruction with English coming in at second at 46%. However, only 26% of teachers shared the same level of concern with history. Therefore, it is likely students, uh, t students and teachers will emphasize the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, to the detriment of history, despite the fact that history reinforces the reading and writing skills necessary for an a good English education. But don't worry, history nerds in the audience, it isn't all doom and gloom. We have the opportunity to change history education permanently and for the better by introducing a new historical discipline into public schools, oral history. Long relegated to tertiary education in a select group of public history institutions, oral history is a unique tool suited to history education in the 21st century. Oral history, for those who don't know, is the process of speaking with people about their experiences for the benefit of historical study. The experience many of us, myself included, have had recording our grandparents talk about their childhoods is a rudimentary version of oral history. Oral history can take many different forms. It can focus on specific events or on an entire person's life. Uh, it can be done at the academic or amateur level, and it can be done for a variety of purposes. If you just paid close attention, you'll notice I didn't use the word interview even once to define oral history. And I'm purposefully avoiding using that word for a reason, even though it would make a short and sweet definition. Oral history is so much more than just interviewing, and that's why it's perfectly suited to the classroom. Oral history requires communication beyond the interview, scheduling a meeting with the narrator, a uh, narrator being the term in oral history for someone who's being interviewed, uh, the interviewee, uh, scheduling a meeting with the narrator before the interview to find background information, answering any questions the narrator has, and thanking them after the interview is complete. And this helps strengthen social skills with strangers, which is important in a time when most of us are just interacting with our family and maybe a couple of close friends. Oral history can even be incorporated into disciplines beyond history. Uh, for example, an English language learner class at James Lick Middle School in San Francisco recently did an oral history project where students interviewed a family member or other person in the community about a recipe that is important to them. Then, the students compiled these recipes, as well as stories about the narrators, into a cookbook. While learning about delicious recipes, these students also learned about cultural identity and the history of immigration from Central America to the United States, all through oral history. And yes, I want to emphasize, these were middle schoolers doing oral history. As this example shows, oral history is also an important tool in interdisciplinary learning. History isn't an insular subject. 
uh, it connects to everything. All too often, students view history as something entirely separate from English or math or drama, and that couldn't be further from the truth. As we've seen, oral history even connects to culinary studies. Oral history may have some technical and academic aspects not often used in a secondary class, but that doesn't mean younger children are unable to participate. In fact, I wholeheartedly believe that oral history education in public schools will help students, regardless of age, learn better. And now before we continue, I want to do a little interactive exercise with all of you. I'm going to ask you all a simple question. Using the raise hand function on Zoom, uh, if you don't know how to use that, just go to uh, participants and then it should um, direct you to raise your hand. Um, raise your hand using the raise hand function if you think history class is boring. And I'll give you all a few seconds to get your hands up. I only see one, two, just up more, more, more. Looks like we have about 10. So it's about a third, a fourth of the people here. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised by that number. I thought it was gonna be over half or um, maybe even more severe. Um, so I'm pleasantly surprised, but uh, we can make history class even more fun and even more entertaining. So instead of 10 hands, we have zero. And the way we do that is through interactive history education, including oral history. Hands-on learning methods like oral history have been proven to be more effective at teaching material than traditional lecture lessons. A study by Louis Deslaliers, the director of science teaching and learning at Harvard, uh, sorted students from a physics class into two groups. And one of these groups used active learning, uh, interactive learning, and the other used lecturing to learn content. And astonishingly, the students who learned through active learning on average scored 10 percentage points higher uh, than the lectured students on review quizzes. And also astonishingly, students had believed they learned more through lecturing and not through interactive learning. This tells us that convincing students about the benefits of oral history in the classroom could potentially require a lot of trial and error. The key word though is could. As the example of James Lick Middle School from earlier shows, students are often keen to pursue oral history once that opportunity is provided. And as that study shows, interactive, uh, interactive history, including oral history, will help students learn better, which is especially important in a time when students are struggling due to, to the COVID-19 pandemic in their classrooms. Oral history also provides a unique opportunity for interpreting primary sources. Instead of reading excerpts from an 18th century diary in a crusty AP European history textbook, oral history allows students to analyze the context and viewpoint of narrators. Significantly, this helps students to think critically about the world around them in a very intimate manner. Most importantly, oral history allows students to realize that they truly do live in and affect history, not just study it. Whereas a traditional classroom might watch videos about the civil rights movement, the classroom that uses oral history allows students to get up close and personal with actual participants of the movement in the 1960s by watching their interviews or, if they're lucky, by interviewing someone who actually participated in the movement. Also, oral history provides students the agency that we deserve in our education. Students doing oral history are taking responsibility for their own learning and pursuing an opportunity that will ultimately mean more to them than rote memorization and studying. If you believe your students are a contributing force to history, so will they, said Drew Saylor, a student at St. Andrew's Episcopal School in Maryland who interviewed one of John Hopkins's first women undergraduate students as part of an oral history interview. Furthermore, oral history allows students to connect local happenings to events on the national or international level. This has extra pertinence considering we are all living through the worst pandemic in a century, and it provides a special opportunity for teachers and students alike to collect, share, and interpret oral histories of this unique time. As a result, 
Teachers across the country and the world should implement oral history into their classrooms to relate the class's lived experiences in the pandemic to the study of history. And some teachers have already done so. California High School's very own Shanna Gagnon is having her students create oral histories to contribute to Arizona State University's Journal of the Plague Year project. Of course, teachers would like to implement interactive lessons, but oftentimes the resources aren't available. Luckily, plenty of oral history resources are available online. Baylor University has a concise introductory guide to conducting oral history available on their website, with one-pagers available on every topic of doing oral history, from contacting narrators to picking topics for a project. Meanwhile, the aforementioned Journal of the Plague Year project has several guides to utilizing their collection for primary and secondary teachers and students, also available online. And if you ever need another jumpstart, Groups like the South Phoenix Oral History Project and the Southwest Oral History Association offer regular seminars and workshops on the different pieces of oral history, and you'll have the opportunity to meet real experts in the field. Hopefully, you are now interested in, or at least aware of, the multitude of benefits oral history provides in the classroom, especially during the pandemic. But it won't be able to help mu very much if it isn't being used in schools. There are several different ways that we can kickstart the process of introducing the subject. First, we can find like-minded peers or even teachers and create an oral history project together. This is the guiding principle behind the San Ramon 2020 project, which is a project that I founded to collect COVID oral histories in our local community. You can also talk to your social studies teachers and peers about the benefits of oral history. Speak with teachers at your school about how oral history can help their students learn better and work with them on developing oral history curriculum. Show the authorities in your school that there's a craving for history education of an interactive and fun variety. And remembering our Harvard study from earlier, you might need to put some elbow grease into your outreach, but it'll all be worth it in the end. If you decide to create a curriculum or to borrow another curriculum, you can always propose it to your local school board. And we're lucky to live in a country where our school boards have a large amount of control over specific instructional materials and methods, which is something that you can utilize to develop better and more interactive instructional methods in your school district, including oral history. Involvement from students in developing curriculum and oral history projects is key. It was a single high school student whose curiosity to make history, not to merely watch it, led to Glenn Whitman creating the American Century Oral History Project, which has allowed juniors in high school to collect over 1,200 oral history interviews since 1991 probably the most successful pre-collegiate oral history project in, well, history. By incorporating oral history into the classroom, we can help limit the negative effect of the pandemic on education and also pave the path for more interactive learning in the future. Let's change history.